Welcome to our War Within Fury Warriors starter video. Whether you're a veteran player eager to get ahead in the new expansion, or you just happen to be curious about the latest changes for Fury Warriors, well, this video is for you. We're going to be covering everything you need to hit the ground running, including a look at what's new for Warriors in the War Within, the top talent choices, the most optimal races, the best gear loadouts, and as a bonus, we're also gonna be including some essential macros that you will not want to be without. And if you are ready to dominate in the War Within, our brand new update to the skill capped add-on has just dropped, giving skill capped members the best UI for PVP with just one click. We've partnered with the world's best players to ensure the skill capped UI is ready for every class in the War Within and to bring you exclusive guides that unlock the full potential of your class. From maximizing damage to perfecting crowd control and outsmarting opponents with the latest tech, we've got you covered. While everyone else is just confused, you can instantly get ahead of the curve with our guides, which are designed to fast track your progress and put you miles ahead of the competition. We're even so confident in our service that we guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating or you're gonna get your money back. So why wait? Click the link in the description below now and join SkillCap today. Now, if you've enjoyed previous iterations of Fury Warrior, well, you're in luck, as The War Within has kept more or less the same playstyle, but with some slight improvements to your rotation and how you dish out damage. Now, when Fury Warrior is pictured in your mind's eye, I wouldn't be surprised if you think of an absolute Chad that massacres their way with brute force and insurmountable pressure. And with the new changes we have to discuss, we don't expect this to change whatsoever. As Bladestorm now becomes one of your core damaging abilities as this spec, and with us using two two-handers, this will naturally hit harder than it does on arms. Now, alongside this, we also received Unhinged, cleaving with Bloodthirst on nearby targets. And even though Bloodthirst does minimal damage, this effect benefits mainly from Deft Experience to extend your Enrage buff for increased damage on all of your abilities. So, while the standard Warrior and Fury talent trees have experienced a significant revamp from how it was in Dragonflight, the main focal point of the War Within, and where most of the new stuff comes from, is from the introduction of what's called Hero Talents. Now, if you want to make use of our Slayer build, it's important to know exactly what you're going to be getting into. But before we get into it though, we do want to remind you about our free article site, which has just been updated for the War Within. As always, with the start of the new expansion, things can quickly change on a dime. So we're going to be keeping all of the information found in this guide up to date in our article. And I've also included talent import strings there too. So do be sure to visit the link in the description below after this. All right, let's get back into the video. We have our centerpiece node that applies Slayer Strikes, dealing some damage to our selected target and grants you an execute modifier, stacking up to three times. Now, in order to frequently consume those execute stacks, we have imminent demise on the left side of the tree, giving you more sudden death procs, and when you use an execute proc, this buffs your next blade storm. Synergizing fairly well with death drive for some bonus self healing whenever you execute with a proc, and with show no mercy, your execute has a higher chance to crit on targets affected by marked for execution which naturally applies to the person that you're hitting. Coming back up in the tree, we have Overwhelming Blades, which grants you a damage modifier on targets based on the amount of hits they received from Bladestorm. And from our talent that we discussed earlier, this becomes buffed by your constant flow of sudden death procs for more strikes. Down below, we now have a choice, Culling Cyclone or Brutal Finish. Although the latter seems promising to buff your damage from your primary spender, Rampage, this totally gets outshined by Culling Cyclone for more added damage coming out of Bladestorm. And like we previously mentioned here, having two two-handers makes Bladestorm stronger than it is for arms. And with this talent buffing its damage by a percentage, a single Bladestorm can generate a ton of pressure. 
Not to mention the bonus damage you receive from this talent point is split depending on the amount of targets it hits, making this ability even better for single target burst. Followed by this node, we have Reap the Storm for a chance to apply some spread pressure after using Bloodthirst. Now this also applies a stack of Overwhelmed for more damage on the target when it procs. Looking at the right side now, we have our next choice node, Relentless Pursuit or Vicious Agility. We prefer picking up Vicious Agility because so many specs instantly kite away from our gap closers, which often means we need to charge and leap back to back, making this talent better for overall mobility. Down below, we have yet another choice node, Opportunist or Fierce Follow Through in which the latter focuses on buffing your bloodthirst every time you crit with it, and with crits being relatively low in the beginning of the expansion and bloodthirst damage being quite marginal in your rotation, Opportunist seems to be the more preferred pick, strengthening your Raging Blow whenever its cooldowns reset from Improved Raging Blow or Wrath and Fury. Followed by this node, we have Slayer's Malice for a flat-out buff to Raging Blow, and for our capstone node, we have Unrelenting Onslaught, making your Bladestorm become more of a rotational ability from its reduced cooldown effect. Now, in order to gain its effects, this requires you to consume Marked for Execution with Execute, which is going to naturally happen as you play. And given the high number of sudden death procs from this hero tree, you're very, very likely to significantly reduce your Bladestorm's cooldown. Not to mention we also gain more stacks of Overwhelming on the target for some extra damage boost after consuming it, as well as your Pummel and Storm Bolt becoming usable during Bladestorm, making your playstyle feel a lot more smooth and a lot more fluid. And remember, you can find exclusive tips in our brand new class courses at skillcap.com where we're going to be releasing new guides every week throughout the War Within. Skillcap members can also unlock premium profiles ready for the War Within in the Skillcap add-on. So don't miss out. Use the link in the description to start gaining rating today. All right, with the new additions covered, let's quickly go over what we're currently suggesting for your Warrior and Fury talent trees. Now, as you can see, we have experienced a lot of changes on our talent trees, with the key new addition being the talent we spotlighted earlier. With what's new on the warrior side of the tree being a good default setup for Slayer. Briefly touching on the highlights here, we have Bounding Stride to further reduce the cooldown on our heroic leap, while also providing us with a massive speed increase upon landing for a couple of seconds. Shockwave is now a 2 second AoE stun as opposed to 3 seconds in Dragonflight. And with it being more of a micro CC anyways, this is best used to annoy and disrupt the enemy team. Spell Reflection is critical against casters as this reflects one magic spell and can change how the game plays out if you reflect some nasty direct damage or some magic projectiles, primarily Mortal Coil. And Thunderous Roar here, which applies a potent AoE bleed on all nearby targets. Now on the Fury side, we experience some changes here with what's on screen being our suggested default talents for Slayer. Now, as a whole, aside from Bladestorm, some of the major highlights here are nice buffs to anger management, reducing the cooldown on both Recklessness and Bladestorm by one second after spending 20 Fury. Warpaint, which is reduced by half in PvP, but makes Enrage uptime more important in order to maximize your passive damage reduction, and Frenzy, granting you a stacking haste buff after using Rampage on your target. However, you'll lose your haste stacks when swapping over to someone else, making it ideal to train one target if you want to deliver the most throughput. But if you need to swap, do so, as making good situational decisions should always take priority in any of your matchups. Then we've of course got all the must-have talents you must be familiar with from Dragonflight, such as Enraged Regeneration, providing you a 30% damage reduction upon activation, is usable in stun effects, and provides you with an immediate heal from our node below, Invigorating Fury. Not to mention, your Bloodthirst now heals for an additional 20% when this is active. But do keep in mind, this will not heal you if parried or dodged. 
Rampage as the bread and butter of Fury Warrior, giving us a way to dump our rage for the hardest hitting ability this spec has to offer. And on top of that, this is how you apply Slaughterhouse, which is one of your default PvP talents to reduce healing on the target and to make use of anger management, reducing the cooldown on both Recklessness and Bladestorm, making it crucial to squeeze in as many as you can during your rotation. And then finally, our Onslaught and Tenderize combo to obtain three stacks of Slaughtering Strikes when you use Onslaught to greatly buff your next Rampage. To learn about different builds and how to adjust your talents for each matchup, be sure to check out our Fury Warrior article. The final step in setting up our talent loadout is discussing PvP talents. Here we have two talents that really never change, Slaughterhouse and Battlefield Commander. Slaughterhouse, as briefly mentioned before, is your Mortal Strike debuff that stacks up to 12 times for a 3% healing reduction per stack and doesn't refresh when you apply more stacks. With Rampage dealing four strikes to your selected target, you apply a 12% healing reduction on each use, and since you can crank this up to 36%, expect this to be the strongest healing reduction in the game if quickly stacked, aside from Sharpened Blade and your PvP talents for arms. Now, on the other hand, Battlefield Commander is just a passively strong option, as this makes all of your shouts way better than before with the most notable effects being Rallying Cry, now breaking all rude effects after used, and the cooldown reduction on Intimidating Shout, which gives you another win condition as this makes your fear cooldown not line up with the enemy healer's trinket. We're then left with one extra slot, with those choices being based on the matchup at hand. Enduring Rage is your most preferred pick if you're constantly getting kited, as it provides you with free enrage procs when affected by a snare or a root effect, greatly assisting you with your enrage uptime. You also have a chance to receive recklessness at a short duration after coming out of CC, making it easy to efficiently throw out slaughterhouse stacks once you connect to your preferred target. Battle Trance for some passive regeneration on your rage and health after using Raging Blow twice on your primary target, and is most favorable against Shadow Priest comps, as you'll have the most uptime on this spec specifically. And in some cases, you may want to swap from or swap to Battlefield Commander, if the enemy team doesn't have a fear, into Disarm. And if the opposing team doesn't have some fear-like spells up their sleeve, you can select this as your third PvP talent. This is only valuable into a select group of classes, rogues, warriors, and hunters, and are best used on their primary offensive cooldowns to prevent the enemy team from snowballing massive pressure. All right, now that we understand the optimal talent choices and the reasoning behind them, the next goal is setting up your character. Now, the first step in this process is gonna be deciding on a race. Your first and most preferable option is Gnome, comparative to all other races as this spec Gnome provides the most consistent benefits and with the removal of Blood Rage and our selection of PvP talents, this makes this pick even more cut and dry for you. As we receive the Racial Escape Artist, allowing you to remove any snare or root effect off yourself on a one minute cooldown. If you're bored of Gnome though, and you potentially wanna try something a little bit different, you can opt for Dark Iron Dwarf as your secondary pick. This is due to the racial Fireblood, offering a good mix of offense and defense, while also providing us with a solid amount of primary stat upon using it, depending on how many debuffs you can dispel off yourself, scaling the best at the beginning of the expansion. As our final alternative pick for Alliance here, we have our old reliable human, and although the racial will to survive has seen some substantial nerfs over the years, it definitely still has its benefits, as you have the option to pick up both an insignia and a badge while still being able to escape stuns every three minutes. Even then though, you can still equip a medallion and it'll just put will to survive on a 90 second cooldown. Not to mention going human, you're still gonna get access to the human spirit for a little extra boost to secondary stats. 
Directing our attention to the Horde races, we have Orc making its way as a promising contender with how easy its racials are to play with. As we receive Blood Fury, a flat on-use buff to your primary stat, again scaling the best at the beginning of every expansion, and not to mention Going Orc grants you access to hardiness for some nice stun reduction that shouldn't be scoffed at if subrogues become the new meta. With race out of the way, let's take a look at what's shaping up to be your best in-slot gear for Season 1. But first, since you'll likely find upgrades along the way, let's definitely discuss your stat priority. Your main focus should be on versatility. Versatility is an absolute no-brainer as well. This is an excellent stat for PvP overall, as it offers a solid balance of both offense and defense and is naturally obtained through your gearing process. Following versatility, we recommend dumping most of your secondary stats in Mastery. This increases your damage on all of your class abilities when Enrage is active, as you're going to be receiving this buff through Bloodthirst, Rampage, and Onslaught to optimize your potential burst damage. Now beyond these two stats, you'll want to reach around 10% of haste to make your rotation feel much more fluid, and don't be afraid of sacrificing a bit of mastery for this stat, as this reduces the global cooldown and increases rage generation from auto attacks, assisting you with min-maxing your rampage uptime. Finally, our last stat is Critical Strike, and with this barely synergizing in our toolkit at all, this stat is typically avoided at all costs. Over the next few weeks, you should look to collect your PvP Scaled 2 set, mainly from helm and legs. For chest and gloves, grab the forged gladiator pieces that have verse and mastery, as well as an Algari crafted piece on your shoulders with the same secondary stats. For our off pieces, we recommend equipping a couple of Algari crafted pieces with verse and mastery anywhere you like, but not too many to where we become squishy. And we're gonna do the same with our jewelry, where we recommend grabbing one Algari competitor signet and the rest as our conquest pieces with verse and mastery. Our primary weapon will also be crafted, with our offhand being the Forged Gladiator's Great Axe, and for our trinkets we're going to be using the Insignia and Medallion of course. However, if you're playing as a human, you can opt for an on use instead of the Medallion if you prefer that. Now let's get everything enchanted. For your cloak you're going to want Chant of Burrowing Rapidity, for chest, Crystalline Radiance, Bracers, Chant of Armored Speed, Legs, Stormbound Armor Kit, Boots, Scout's March, or Plains Runner's Breeze, and then for your rings, grab Radiant Versatility or Cursed Mastery for both. Finally, the last enchant is for your weapons, where we suggest getting Authority of Radiant Power or Authority of the Depths for both, depending on your preference. Due to the addition of the Vicious Jeweler setting, you're now going to be able to add gems to your helmet, amulet, rings, belt, and bracers. One of these can be one of three unique PvP-specific gems, and out of these, we highly recommend the Enduring Bloodstone for additional survivability. For the rest of your gem slots, the Masterful Sapphire provides the best overall boost to your favorite stats. And as for your embellishments, the most viable ones in the current meta tend to be Darkmoon Sigil, Ascension on your weapon, and Writhing Armor Banding on any of your off pieces. These embellishments will give you a nice boost to your secondary stats, further assisting you with how much damage you can deal. But as things can change as the season progresses, make sure to check out our article linked in the description to keep up with the latest gearing decisions that are being made. Finally, let's wrap things up with a look at some must-have macros for Fury. First, we suggest having focus macros for all your important crowd control enabling you to CC and interrupt off targets without the need to deselect your current target. So that's Pummel, Stormbolt, Intimidating Shout, and Charge. And for Arena macros, these essentially do the same thing. Although it may seem a bit more difficult to get used to than Focus macros, this will allow you to effectively apply a spell on any Arena player in a 3v3 game without having to rely on player frames. Now, as a warrior, you're going to want to land your intervene as quickly as possible on your allies during massive enemy burst windows. One way to streamline this process is with Party 1 and Party 2 macros. Now, if you're unfamiliar with these, Party 1 refers to the person at the top of your party frames, 
and party two is the second person. The basic way of doing this is what you see on screen now, where you'll need two macros for each ability exactly like the example you can see on screen now. And as a minor optimization to your gameplay, we recommend using stance macros to guarantee that these will remain on your character, primarily with these two featured on the screen, as these are gonna make sure you don't cancel out these stances with the same bind if you already have it active. And speaking of which, brings along another type of stance macro that allows you to alternate between Berserker and Defensive Stance with only one keybind featured on the screen now. And remember this, Skillcapped is the only service that guarantees you'll climb at least 400 rating. Now we make this promise because Skillcapped really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Think of it like a gym membership that guarantees you'll get ripped. Crazy, right? So get started today by clicking on the link in the description. As always though, we wanna thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.